Hello. How are Hi. you? Anna? Happy New Year. I'm doing good. I just yeah, woke up an great. hour ago. Well, trying to look fresh. You you told you me right that now. because of our <laughs> rescheduled then you had a little bit more time to sleep, right? That's great. Hey, yes. How are you doing? How was your new year? I spent it. Oh, I just spent it uh, with with my family and Noche friends buena. eating Noche Buena. We ate pizza and then noodles mm -hmm. for a long life, Great. as they say here, <laughs> as we as the tradition here in the Philippines because Great. of our Chinese influence. Uh, so everyone eats noodles yeah. on New Year's Eve. It depends. We usually have this tradition here that you eat uh, something that will make your family and that so that you will, can attract okay. more fortune and prosperity, not just for yourself, but for your loved ones. So um, okay. my mom cooked noodles so that okay. we'll all enjoy longer lives. And then oh. also rice cakes. So, you know, glutinous rice cakes. So the meaning of that is... Uh, for us to still get, you know, sticky right. with one another throughout the year. I don't know if you believe in that. I don't know if you have the same kind well, of tradition. Well, we, we, we have some <laughs> or traditions. Practices. I think it's interesting to get to know how every culture celebrates this special date. In our case, for New Year's Eve, we eat grapes. We eat 12 grapes at 12 a.m., celebrating the beginning of the new year. And you need to make a wish for every grape you eat. 12 so wishes. 12 so wishes. I, I don't only have one, I have 12. I, I, I already have one in my mind that you probably know which one is it, but then I have 11 left. <laughs> oh, all right. So for sure, we, all, we already know what you want. You've been wish what you have wished since last night. For sure, you know, it can really come through. Well, it could really come through, judging from everyone's as always, I'm, I'm leaving you. everything in God's hands because we have already done the work that had to be done during this whole year of preparation, and I'm really happy about that. Yeah, so before we proceed with the interview, can we engage some of our followers who are tuning right now? Wait, before, before that, I'm just say, I, can I just say how I am so stunned with your oh, wing eye look right now? Thank you so like, much. Wow. wow. Thank God I dressed up in I, I dressed up well so in front pretty. of you right you look now. So pretty. I feel like it's you so all. early there. So you look stunning in, in the first morning of the year. <laughs> <laughs> wait till you have oh wait till God. I get there in when New are, Orleans. When are you going there? I, I, I'm arriving Great. next weekend on January seventh. Let me know as soon as I arrive. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so wait anyway, okay. Lifestyle Fun Fun Artist is greeting you right now. He says, um, oh, Hermosa so Amanda. Cute. I'm also reading the comments. Let's read some Spanish. Actually, uh, yeah. um, can, wait, uh, from Lifestyle, can someone, she's requesting if you can set, if you can give a massive uh, shout out to him. He adores you so much. He's he's been an You're avid follower of mine here on Instagram. So his name is Cian Guerrero. Cian Guerrero. Um, yeah, can you just give him a little shout out because it will mean the whole world to me, to, sure. to him Cian. for you to say that. I'm sending you also a big hug and my best wishes for you and for everyone who's watching for this new year, 2023. Lots of kisses. Yeah, so, you know, with only a few days left before you officially check in, how are you feeling well, at the moment? Well, this is the most asked question these last days. And I need to tell you that I'm really feeling super excited. I, I haven't felt nervous at all, and I'm feeling glad about that. I'm feeling excited, satisfied. I, I think it's more about being anxious for the time to arrive, you know, like I already want to be there in New Orleans and start meeting all my Miss Universe sisters and the whole team. But I'm, I'm just like that, excited and counting the hours, like literally. I wonder, I wonder how you will oh, look like for your arrival. Oh my God, outfit. well, I know, I know that we're going You're to get from... into my, my career stuff and all those topics. So I have some surprises about that, but I, I can, I 
spare you that. I can tell you that it's going to be designed by me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I love it so much, especially when you talk when you talk about how you came up with it. it wow! It was, wow! It's so incredible. Creative. That yeah. code, it was amazing to make it because it was an idea that came to me like at two a.m. I I couldn't sleep because I was designing, and I just went to bed and I was like, wait. It, another idea is coming and I just woke up got my iPad started sketching and then seeing the reality seeing the piece made a reality it's so satisfying yeah and you even had had your plane ticket printed on the, on yeah, the well, bottom was part of your cake it was totally mine wow. it was like a, a fantasy of my ticket because if you get the details on it you see that the destination is Miss Universe the yes. flight 71st edition yes. passenger miss venezuela it was so fun making it oh i'm sure yeah you know i've never been excited to talk oh, to a uh, miss venezuela in miss universe than now seriously that's why i'm really reaching you out Thank for an you. interview right now and you know it's and as you prepare for the competition you yes, left two weeks earlier than the supposed departure is there a reason behind yeah. it why you left early? lots of for reason, Miami. But the most important of those is that I'm training with Tammy Susbanco, which was my, my trainer, my coach and fitness trainer, also during the month of August. Before going to the universe offices, I came with her and I trained for two weeks intensively, eight hours a day, four in the morning, four at night. And that's just what we're doing right now before departing to New Orleans. This morning I was training as well. I never imagined myself training on a 31st of December. So you're still training on New Year's Eve when you're supposed to be relaxing, but enjoying, also, and enjoying fun with your friends. I also get the friends. chance to relax and rest, but the training in, in this part, in, in these days, has been essential. It also helps me to disconnect myself a little bit from everything relax myself while I'm working and preparing. So how does it feel to be spending the holiday season away from your loved ones? Well, I'm Venezuela? already used to that, you know, because I, I left my house when I was 16 years old. I moved to uh, first to the United States, then to Canada and then to Italy. And since I was a little girl, I always moved around because of my dad's job. So we, we really never spent Christmas and New Year's Eve like always in Venezuela. We were traveling around the world. And then when I graduated from high school, I decided to go and study abroad. And at that point, I, I knew it, it was one of the sacrifices that I had to do to study and prepare myself professionally in the place that I dreamt to do it. So... Since that moment, you know, uh -huh. like I, I understood that there are some places that can make you feel also at home. And there are some moments that you can share with your family in a different way. Let's say that even if we're not together right now, 13 minutes ago, I was talking with my little sister and I talked to my dad recently too. Like we, we stay in touch, we stay connected every single day of our lives. And that's what really matters to us. Another we're talking about your dad you know i did not realize you know that your dad is as i did more research about you that your your dad i mean your parents are both personalities or well accomplished uh individuals in their respective fields your dad is a football personality while your mom is a is a is a huge huge um is a huge uh personality as well in their in the realm of real estate so from football to real estate, wow, you really carved your, I can see why you're so accomplished at the age of 22 right now. And I suppose you would follow their footsteps, being a real estate agent or being a sportscaster or someone who's athletic as a sportswoman, but you carve your own path. Wow. So how did they inspire oh, you to become an achiever? That that's such Precisely a young Precisely what age. you mentioned, you know, like uh, someone who, who's determined to achieve whatever I want or I set myself to accomplish in life because I learned that from them. It's not easy at all to choose a sport as a professional career. And when my dad did it, 
he he also needed the support of his family and he got it thanks to god but it was not an easy decision because he was also studying at the university and he has he had to left his studies to dedicate himself 100 percent to soccer and that's not easy because you you always think and you always have that desire of accomplishing also a professional career that can make your life a little bit more secure and soccer is everything but secure you know like in soccer you need to be pretty disciplined and pretty focused on it and also talented of course to make it happen to to become a professional soccer player but thanks god my dad always knew what he wanted and he went to pursue it he never doubted about it but he did work a lot for it so that's the greatest thing i learned from him and i i did it myself when i decided to study fashion design because it's also a career that sometimes it can make you doubt. Mostly in Latin American countries, or in in my in my case in Venezuela, which is not the most common career, let's say it that way. So I was sometimes I was tempted to study something else, something more secure. But I really felt passionate about fashion, and I was like, I just asked myself, like, why can't I show myself that I I can make it real, I can make it happen, and then from my mom. She has reinvented herself as many times as you can imagine. She was also a real estate agent, as you said, but she's originally an architect. Like professionally, she graduated as an architect, but life circumstances made her reinvent herself. And she was able to make it happen also in her case. And I learned that from her. She never stopped. She never quit. She became stronger. Uh, getting over any, any, any obstacle that life presented to her. And that's also her greatest thought. So from what you just said, I assume you got your, your um, competitiveness, determination from your dad and your exactly. love for the arts. Absolutely. For Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, so it, so is it so is it safe to assume that it's your mom who introduced you or influenced you to well the not really no, not really uh, i got into fashion because i because i was a model since i was 13 years old and when i was 15 i went to a fashion runway where some students were graduating from a course a fashion design course and when it was be behind the runway behind the scenes I saw everything that they were able to do, like every concept, like they had to explain what they were creating in that runway. It was not like the typical runway that you show the clothes and that's it. They had a concept behind and I was amazed with that. I was really impressed. And I said like, I, I want this, like I want to create and make ideas, transform them into realities. And then I got into it I talked to my parents, they supported me. They were a little bit, you know, like doubting about it. Like they just got scared. Like why is she getting interested in, in fashion? Like at this point, you know, I was at that moment, I was thinking about studying architecture or dentistry, but I didn't really feel it. You know, like I, I was not like, wow, yeah, I want to be an architect. Or, I would love to become a dentist. When I got into fashion design, then I really understood what it feels to feel passionate about something. And that, that was the beginning. And then, well, the rest is history. I, I had a, a little brand when I was 16 years old. And then I started to begin with a lot of entrepreneurships. That, that has been also a key in my life, like to try and project after project until one of them becomes big. Did you realize that your love for fashion will eventually serve as your as one of your advantage or edge now that you're here in Miss Universe? Now that you, I'm rethinking about it. No, I about never it thought about you. it that way because I always I always tell this like when I was preparing myself or when I was starting fashion design, I I was not thinking about getting into the Miss Venezuela, and I think that's beautiful. Because also, for example, my work with Made in Petare, I don't know if you know my brand, uh, where we do accessories with, and we work with the moms from Petare. 
I started that like three years ago. At that moment, I had no idea that I was going to participate at Miss Venezuela. So everything that now I'm bringing to this platform, it was part of me. It's not created for a pageant. So it's, 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 real, it's really natural and it's been really organic, you know? It, it's just showing who I really are. And I think that's the most beautiful part. So I never imagined or thought like, you know, maybe being a designer can help me. But throughout the journey, I understood that I was able to mix the both things that I, was lo I, I am loving, which are fashion and now uh, my preparation for Miss Universe, because also the Miss Universe platform, it encourages you to take the most out of what you are already doing. So that's incredible. Because I feel, I feel like if that's not the case, then I feel like you're coming in in such a perfect place at the right time. Totally perfect timing. I mean, you know, who knew that Miss Universe will be so, you know, serious about its green agenda. And now that they're really upping at that notch um, with, the, with all these, uh, with all the, with their sustainable sash and, um, and even, you know, how they really want to really champion and talk for more fans and even candidates like you to talk more about what's happening in, in, in our world right now, especially in taking Mother Earth. So when I, when I relate that to you, oh my God, everything just seems so aligned, perfectly aligned in what the organization is looking for. I never thought about it when you were crowned last year as Miss Universe Venezuela 2021. But now as you, you know, engage us with your post, your love for fashion, oh my God, oh my God. And then and a new owner is also a fashion, a fashionable personality as well. Oh my oh. gosh, she can really work well with a new set of owners. So what inspired you to create your own fashion label? Well, as, as I studied fashion design, then my thesis project was about creating my fashion label. But the first collection, it was inspired in my culture, in a community that is called the Wayu culture. Because I wanted to leave that special moment for my roots, you know, like during the whole years of my career, I never intended to do it only about Venezuela. I focused on getting to know about other cultures. I was studying in Italy, so I, I researched about history in Italy, arts in Europe. But then the thesis project, it was all about Venezuela. And that, that, that's also what I wanted to show. And that's also what I'm now showing at Miss Universe. And it's incredible, just as you say, how everything starts to, to link. Well, like connecting the dots and everything makes perfect sense because my only goal has been always to show what are we made of what is venezuela possible to show to the universe and this has been incredible as a fashion designer and now as miss venezuela so that that's what really inspires me i mean in, i'm inspired i get inspired by women by powerful and confident women i want to dress those women and make them feel every time more secure about the, their selves. And what, what better way to dress up women by showcasing it yourself? So I assume, will you be doing your entire wardrobe in this <laughs> universe from day one till the end? Will, will, it, will you be serving your signature Amanda do the male style in every Not outfit that you'll be wearing? Entirely, but you will see a lot of them. And we have few days, like we only have approximately nine to 10 days to show those outfits that we got ready. So let's see, you will see a lot of my designs around there. So yeah, let's talk more about it. Just, just you know, pique our curiosity and interest because this is what we live for as a pageant fan. So what is one wardrobe of yours in your Miss Universe, uh, in your Miss Universe wardrobe that you are so excited to reveal for us very very soon if you can you know just oh, give sure. us a little you know, sneak peek really, or you know, i really detail. would like to tell you everything but we need to go like step by step but i can tell you that i am super excited about my departure look i i'm sure you're going to love it and there are a lot of surprises coming along with my departure look <laughs> so, yeah Good. Now that you talk about your departure look again, can we talk about it more? Because, um, wait, I'm gonna check out your um, by Amanda Dumamil. Because I feel like you said that this outfit is uh, made of uh, sustainable 
materials. So I want to challenge you right now. I want to challenge you right now. Can you, as a designer yourself, off the top of your head, how can you still make this more sustain a more sustainable piece? Can you how can you make a recycled well, outfit out of this? Let's talk. Let's do a let's do the challenge of upcycling. That's called upcycling. Let's say I'm your Anna Quisley and you're my Anne Hathaway. How can you like? How can you like make a recycle? How can you um, make a more stunning love, piece out of this challenge. in a I recyclable? And you know, in this case, rescuing the part that has the print on it, I would make a super fashionable skirt only with the bottom of the coat. Because as the as the whole code is plain, this is in case we want to upcycle the piece and give it like a second a second life, which is also part of my collections. So I would like cut it on half and then just made a skirt out of it. So the bottom remains the same print, but you can use it in another form, in another piece. But there's also an, an interesting part because when I used the code, I told everyone that there was a second part coming. And if there's something that... Huh? Sorry? Where? <laughs> Where's the second the part second coming? Part I can, coming I can soon. The second part is coming <laughs> soon in New Orleans. <laughs> I only can reveal that. But... The, the... So, so there's a storyline behind this like this is not just one look this will evolve in another outfit oh i love that you're incorporating a storyline yeah. this is yeah. how you only did it before and now you're doing it too yeah oh there, there's... i love that i'm seriously as a fan like oh my god you're not just wearing an outfit there's a story behind every outfit she's i ever love wearing. that i, I love that too yeah i love to have a story to tell behind every piece I, I create. And that's key in my designs. All right. Me, what I'm thinking is probably, um, yeah, you can upcycle it, make it a dress, make it a dress, and then put a big retro belt. Since this is white, put a big retro belt, like Love color it. turquoise or teal. And then, and then probably you can put a touch of streetwear with the since with a printed uh, boarding ticket you can put it there to give you that yeah. streetwear feel yeah. at the same time i don't know i'm just ex doing my ex doing my Miranda <laughs> I, love that. I love that idea. <laughs> i i will write that down so, so now that you know you are very vocal about your brand being fashionable being fashionable and at the same time sustainable what does it mean for you right now to be recognized for your work in it's sustainability. It's been incredible. And as you said, I never imagined that precisely this year, Miss Universe was going to focus on bringing sustainability to the table, you know, like opening this conversation. And, and I am definitely ready to join it. I am super excited because it's something that has been part of my life since the moment I decided to become a designer because I believe that's the path we need to take as professionals in every single industry. So I'm a professional in the fashion industry, which is the second most contaminant, most pollutant in the world, which should be my responsibility. You know, I get asked that question myself and then I, I understand that it's really a, a responsibility that we must assume. I'm a professional of the industry, but also everyone as a consumer. So I'm, I'm super excited to get to New Orleans and start talking about these topics because it's there's nothing more satisfying than doing what you love, talking about what makes you feel passionate, yes. you know, and, and spreading all that energy to the universe. So... I'm glad that you are into it and you're very passionate about talking about fashion sustainability. So how would you explain to that how would you explain the importance of brands like yours in making steps to be more ethical and sustainable for those people who are not well versed? Well, talking about sustainability this? in fashion, it, it's talking about making more conscious decisions. That's how I see it. Because sustainability in my case, I don't only approach it 
on an environmental aspect. I also do it socially. So you need to, the first thing you need to do is question yourself. Like, which kind of products are you buying? Do you know where does it come from? Do you know who is making it? Do you know what's the impact it is generating? Do you know there's some story to tell behind that piece? And then when you get to answer all those questions, you need to analyze it and decide what do you want to do? You want to, to keep on buying pieces that are damaging the planet and probably also not taking the, the job respectfully of the people who's working on those pieces or you prefer to understand how brands are working on a transparent way leaving a, an impact stamp on every step they make and taking also like a deep anal analysis on the, the materials they choose, on the way they produce, the people they work with. So I think it's, it's just about being more and more conscious in the simple decisions that we take day by day. And fashion is part of our daily life. I mean, we, you chose that shirt yeah. you're wearing right now for a reason. But if you get into the detail, then you get to be more conscious about what you're wearing. Like if you get asked yourself, where did you buy it? How long will it last? How many times can you use it? Which material is it made from? And, and if we start questioning ourselves in every single sense, not only in fashion, fashion because it's my profession, but also about the food we eat, also about the places we visit, also about how we do tourism, for example. We, we can also talk about sustainable tourism. It's about making our decisions every time more conscious because we all want to live in this planet to the end of our days. But not only because in my case, I wish with having a family and I wish to be able to offer my family a great future too. So it's thinking about making the future sustainable for a long amount of years to come. You know, when, you, when I hear you talk, well, I really can, can imagine you as a potential Miss Universe, especially with your background and what you can offer to the table. So if you were to be crowned Miss Universe, how can you contribute to the uplift and the and and the popularity of a brand well like Miss definitely Universe. mixing our strengths like getting our strengths together and Miss Universe is a platform that is made to empower women it's made to prepare and, and get stronger women and make them even more confident around the world and as a fashion designer I am passionate about dressing comfortable women making them feel more comfortable on their own skins throughout the clothes that they choose to wear. So I do believe that we will make an amazing team together. And, and not only that, you know, because I also love this communication about topics that are on today's conversations, modern problems that we are every time facing, every day facing. And that's what it's all about, living an impact in every single thing we do, in every action we take. Do you think, you know, with, do you think with all the sustainable talk, fashion sustainability sweeping across Hollywood and now pageants like Miss Universe, do you, do you think, you know, the world of fashion today has successfully somehow implemented sustainability I into our consciousness? I think we still have a long journey to, to walk. Yeah, and, and I'm also glad that I'm working on it at this point because we still have a lot of goals to achieve. Let's talk about the, the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. I mean, we still have a lot, a lot, a lot to get to, you know, like a lot of goals to achieve. And same happens with fashion. We are on a good point because the consumer, in my opinion, is getting every time more confident about its decisions but as a professionals of the industry we still have to educate to communicate and show that important information just as you gave me the opportunity tonight you know like to talk about the topic and understand and make people also understand with real information what is this all about like why should we talk about sustainability you know I say this to so you more cute. wow I want 
Wow. You can really you absolutely know, we're just like, we're just like, stuck. like, we're like, she just, Keep saying and saying and saying, I'm like, yes, 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 ma'am. <laughs> we're, we're lapping it all up, yes. You know, and I can, and I really think as early as now, if you'll be crowned Miss Universe, you can really implement those things and you know, make, make your brand accessible to the public and for Miss Universe to elevate it to a huge platform. Because let's face it, fashion sustainability is such a big deal right now among among companies, especially in the, when we talk about coming from the perspective of uh, environmentalists. So I wonder, how, you, how do you think your brand will look like in the future? Will you value couture or sustainability Well, you more? know, I, I do believe I have been able to mix both of them. So I, I don't really focus on having a couture brand because when you, you, when you work towards sustainability, your your options to choose from materials are not as broad as when you can choose whatever you want. So I firstly need to focus on sustainability, then to focus on the aesthetics of the brand. But I am great. I am glad to say that I've been able to combine both of them because I also believe that in the end of the conversation, it's fashion and it needs to be fashionable. It needs to be beautiful, but it can be beautiful and conscious. You know, as my last few questions, you know, as we talk more about it, I just realized how fashion can be forever changing and still have those trends come back, you know, from previous seasons and reemerge as the in thing to do. Who knew that? Going to Miss Universe now, the in thing to do is to be more sustainable. So for fashion contestants like you, is that, a, is that a favorable thing that at least you get to spend less with your clothes and just, just exercise your creativity in redoing your outfits as opposed to w looking for the best designer gown there is in town just to impress and shock That's so people true. come preliminary. I, I would love that. Right? You know? That would be a great yeah. challenge. Like an activity called the, the most sustainable outfit. I, I would love that. Like it's like the concept now for Miss Universe is instead dressing to the nines, it's like dress for less. And now I'm sudden I suddenly thought of the of the trip shop in the in the States, Ross, dress for less. Yeah, that's the like, I'm thinking right now. But so you know, as much as I want to talk to you longer, I cannot yeah. because I I know you're busy spending it with your loved ones on it. But thank, I'm, you, thank so you, thank much. you so much. I'm really having I just had glass getting to know you you know i'm just you know as much as i'm impressed with your fashion designing skills i'm also impressed with how you conducted yourself in this interview like especially in those questions that we talk you talk about fashion sustainability like myself 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 like, oh. I'm, I'm, yeah that's how that's great that's how good you are and you know this interview just confirm your favoritism for the title of Miss Universe. I'm not sure quoting you. I'm like, you're the real deal. Like, you really want the Thank talk. I'm like, you know, Miss Thank Universe, you, so you want something? Much, Adam. Yeah. It was Start so free. nice to talk to you. And please, like, really, please let me know as soon as you arrive to New Orleans because we need to meet in person and continue talking about sustainability also there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just hope the security guards will allow us to Let's have a small so. chat in the hotel lobby every Great. now and then. I'll be Great. arriving on the 7th. Yeah, I hope I won't be chat -lagged. I promise, as soon as I leave my bags in my Airbnb, I'll go straight to, the, to your official hotel because my, hotel, my Airbnb is just seven minutes away from the official hotel. So, you know, a lot of, let's, before I let you leave, uh, there are so many comments coming in. Let's engage some of them. I want her and Celeste Cortesi to be holding hands. You know, I really enjoyed your interview with her. I really, and see, this is the thing. You also did this series Voice. of vo Voices Voice. series talk with all your fellow candidates. I am glad yeah. you like it. Yeah. I also enjoyed that episode with Celeste. She's so nice. And she was so kind because her schedule was full, but still she made it possible. And we had that incredible conversation. So imagine if you two might end up... And in the wow. last dying moments of the I competition the best of the that will be heaven really. for all of us. So before before I let you leave, um, 
Can I ask you this classic yes. question? <laughs> Why should you be the next? Well, I do universe? believe that I'm ready to face this new challenge of my life. I have prepared during more than a year and I feel aligned with everything that Miss Universe is now seeking on their new queen, on their new ambassador. I know that all my Miss Universe sisters have, for, have worked as hard as I have, and I just ask to God and, and pray to, 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 the, to life just to crown a woman that has worked a lot during this year. And I really consider that now that we have accomplished all these projects becoming a reality, we are more than ready to face this new challenge that's starting on the 3rd of January in New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Universe, if you want a transformational leader for your next queen, she's already oh in front of me. One universe. So yeah, yeah, I, I can see the signs, like you know, all these little signs aligning slowly in your candidacy for Miss Universe. So thank you, thank, thank you so much again, Miss Amanda. No doubt. Thank you so much. You'll be much. one of the now I'm going to receive one of the new year here. Mwah, mwah. Kisses to everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. See you soon. Virtual hugs and kisses all the way Bye. from my office here in Cook.